highly recommend marrying black men. A lot of Arab and brown women are reaching out and they're trying to find black men. And I say black men are kind. They're very secure in their masculinity. They're also gentle. They're also not like, like, I see this a lot in the Arab community because they grew up in it. Men get very shy that their women are, are out there or their women work or their woman does something. And black men are very chill and secure about it. Like she's on her dean, she's respecting herself. I'm not gonna feel shy about this. And th that's a huge cultural difference that I definitely appreciate from marrying a black man. So do yourself a favor, ladies. Find yourself a black man. <laughs> I do have a question for the passport bros. When are y'all gonna take charge and lead your own movement? Like instead of sitting on this app gaslighting every fucking body, when are y'all just gonna leave? Like y'all can't even lead y'all selves out of the countries, but y'all wanna lead the families. I'm just I'm hella confused on what's happening here. When are y'all actually I'm just going? curious as to why so many modern women are confused as to why men are leaving. You know, why we have the passport bros and men who are deciding to look for women elsewhere. A lot of women are asking the question, why? And some of them seem so oblivious to the point where they really All don't right. get it. So this is the story that I wanted to focus on. And this story is not tagged as passport bros. This story has really nothing to do with passport bros in the mainstream uh, based on Passport Bros itself as a movement. This story is actually about how some, not really expatriates, but how I should say some traveling Americans are behaving and getting themselves into trouble. Now, one of the things you need to understand first and foremost is when you go to these foreign countries, and this is part of the reason why Passport Bros do not want Pookies and Ray Ray's following them. We want, but we, it's like, we, we know that we're not policing you. It's just that we prefer to not have y'all coming behind us messing things up because the Pookies and the Ray Ray's who basically don't understand how to deal with themselves here in America will go overseas and they'll make things worse for enlightened Western traveling blue book gentlemen when we say blue book we mean the passport so we absolutely don't want pookies and ray rays following us however we know that yeah we have really no control over whether they do what we do know is that these people in general are not of sound mind we these are the dregs of the hood they are the products of the welfare state they are the products of the single mother homes they don't know how to act they do stupid things and for them to follow behind us when we are basically the passport bros are basically ambassadors when we go overseas when we go to other countries we are ambassadors we just in how we act and how we carry ourselves we are showing these foreign women that there are options out there that they can possibly meet up with. They can meet, possibly marry in the future. And what we've been noticing, just like I used on this video, a lot of these foreign women are beckoning black men, beckoning black men. I, I'll say it again, beckoning, waving, putting their hands up. Here, I'm over here, black man. I would love to meet a black man, to date a black man, to have a black husband. These women are beckoning black men to come their way but the problem ultimately is a lot of these foreign women they don't know the difference in black men they don't know that there's a difference between pookie and ray ray and uh you know upstanding middle class or even upper class black men they don't understand the difference right away it takes time for them to figure it out because they're only used to their own men so the thing about it is you have a lot of these dudes and this is not just uh limited to black men this also as you're going to see in this story, has occurred with other men because I'm, I've got these stories to read. And there's these other dudes who've done stupid things, even if they're not even Americans, but these dudes go to these countries, they do stupid things. These are the actual quote-unquote predators that these women are talking about who are going there to, to do sex tourism and this, that, and other. Now, never mind the fact that a lot of these women do their own sex tourism. Like, we've got videotape of them getting their groove back when they try. Now, and I want you to notice something. These women always travel to the exact same place. They go to the Caribbean, they go to Africa, and they go to Europe. Those, those same places. Why? It's because they can dominate the men. They can dominate the local economy because our money as Americans is worth more. 
and they can dominate. Uh, they can basically be dominant because our, our women are fucking huge. They weigh like three and four hundred pounds. So our women are bigger than a lot of these foreign women. Like you have you take a look at these foreign women. Most of them are between like 100, maybe 180 tops, maybe 200 at the most. And that's if they're tall. Our women are blowing them away. Our, our women, some of our women be in high school. And weigh like two and three hundred pounds. So no, our women are blowing them out the water when it comes to do when it comes to physical dominance. It's like putting Shaquille O'Neal up against Gary Coleman. That's what I'm talking about. But okay, let me get into the story. Let me get into the story because I can always ad lib later. So it says expat who films Filipinas without consent and posts on YouTube earns internet's anger. Now some of these countries, specifically off the top of my head, I know South Korea. And Philippines, uh, well, most Asian countries in general, but specifically South Korean and Philippines, they are very serious about face and saving face and how they look in the media. They have, in, in South Korea specifically, they have a law against uh, filming without permission. And the thing about it is, it's like, Dudes do it all the time. Like they have, they walk around with those selfie sticks and they're filming constantly. Some people will say something about it. Some people won't say something about it. If you're in a sensitive area, some of them absolutely will say, no, you can't film in here. And, and they'll hide their face. A lot of these people are still wearing these COVID masks, not because COVID is a problem in where their area is. It's because they're ugly and they don't want nobody seeing their face. Listen, they have a right to wear their COVID mask forever, but you know, a lot of them are ugly. And, you know, I'm thinking of some people I actually work with. Some of them are very ugly. But um, anyway, uh, okay, another day, another creepy expat story. This is by Coconuts Manila. After vlogger and self-proclaimed Mr. Pogi German, Mr. Handsome German, Pogi, that's what Pogi means, Marcel Musol was arrested earlier this week by police for the alleged rape of a minor and violations of the Anti-Voyeurism Act. It seems that another foreign fellow in the Philippines is giving him a run for the money. Redditors have called out on expat posting videos under the handle expat kings, who takes videos of Filipinos on the street without their consent, including some who appear to be underage schoolgirls. Yeah, you see, first of all, you want to avoid that. Now, I've watched a lot of Passport Bro content. Usually, it's on public beaches in those countries. And for the most part, I've never actually seen anybody complaining about it in the background or saying anything negative. But it's best to be clandestine with your camera footage if possible. It's best. Now, I mean, if you have a girlfriend, chances are she's not going to have a problem with it. You go to the beach with her, you're taking photos of her. If there's anybody behind her in the background, oh, that's that's fair game. Anybody who just happens to walk into frame, yo, that's fair game. Most people, if they see that you're with somebody and you're videotaping, they'll do their best to avoid being in the camera lens. Other people will be completely oblivious. They'll not care. The problem here comes if you're actually making videos in public spaces in countries that have anti-voyeurism laws like this one. And that can be a problem. You, you want to avoid that. It's always important to know the laws of these countries you go to because you don't want to get arrested. You don't want to have uh, legal problems. You don't want to... Because see, for the most part, YouTube, because it's an American entity, for the most part, they're not going to take down any of your videos if you're in another country and you make a video where there's an anti-voyeurism law, for the most part, YouTube's not going to do it. If there happens to be a large enough movement to come after you, like if you're a YouTuber who grows really, really big and a lot of people notice, then maybe you might have to worry about that. It's always best to just play it safe. Okay, let me keep moving. Coconuts did a cursory look at Expat King's YouTube page, which has about 11,600 follow subscribers. I just subscribed to him. He had over 12,000. So that means that this story actually helped him grow a little bit. You know what they say? They say any news, any advertisement is good advertisement. So just by him being in this story, I've never heard of this dude before, but I did subscribe to him just in case he posts something new. I'll be able to watch it. 
Um, it says, and many of the videos seem to be targeted towards other male foreigners planning to visit or live in the Philippines. The Expat King's YouTube page is associated with a sleazy travel website of the same name marketed towards men. We show you ways to see the world for less and find love in the process. It's about description read, with Tariq Pierce identified as its founder and editor-in-chief. The Expat King's YouTube account has a similar description on its About page. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Tariq TJ, and I am an American living abroad as a digital nomad. Expat Kings is a travel and lifestyle channel that will give you advice on international travel, living abroad as an expat, making money online, and meeting beautiful women all over the world. My channel is all about giving you the truthful insights on what it's like to travel the world as a black man. There's another channel like this called Black Experience Japan, and he also has done some interviews, and he's also done videos in South Korea. And that's also a very good site. And um, every now and then he interviews Japanese people and he also interviews blacks who are living abroad in, in Asia and Southeast Asia when he has the chance. So you should look out for that. It's called Black Experience Japan. Um, while some videos do tackle general travel topics such as can you live in the Philippines on U.S. $1,200 a month, um, personally, $1,200 a month is low. When I go to the Philippines, even when I do my best to conserve money, I would say that before you book it, like if you're coming to the Philippines, if you're coming here for like two um, weeks or if you go in there for a month, it's probably better to prepay your stay. Now, some people don't want to prepay because they don't want to stay in one place. I prefer the condo which I own there, and I'll stay just in the condo because the condo has everything. It's got, number one, it's got gated security. It's got armed guards. So just in case anybody has a problem with an American tourist and they want to come my way, yeah, well, you got to deal with that guy at the gate that's got the shotgun, and you also have to deal with that guy at the gate who's packing a forty-five caliber uh, 1911 because they have a lot of guns left over from like World War II. See, the thing about it is, your safety should always be a concern. Granted, a lot of these countries have full control and totalitarian rule over their people. If any of them try to harm you or rob you or anything, when they catch that person, if that person doesn't get beaten to death immediately, they'll get jailed for lengthy prison terms. None of this bullshit like here in New York City or here in America where when somebody commits a mass murder, you have to wonder whether or not they're going to get the death penalty. None of that bullshit. Like, like, for instance, that white kid, uh, I don't even remember his name, but he went into that store, that, that grocery in Buffalo, and he killed up a bunch of people because they were black. Well, here's the thing. Had that been China, he would have had about a two-hour trial. He'd have been found guilty, and then he would have been chopped up into body parts. Somebody would have inherited his kidneys. Somebody would have inherited the lens from his eye, his eye, like the parts of your eye that they can actually transplant. Somebody would have inherited the pieces of his lungs that could be transplanted. Somebody would have inherited his pancreas, any part that could be used. If he had any blood cells or any cells worth using, they would have been, he would have been turned into car parts. That's one of the reasons I like China so much. If anybody were to mess with me as a tourist, like if anybody were to come up to me like 3 o'clock a.m. when I'm at the ATM before I go to the club or something, if anybody were to mess with me, when that government catches you, there ain't no wonders about whether or not you're going to pay the price. Here in New York City, they pushing people on the subway tracks. In fact, we had a video not long ago. Some crazy ass woman pushed a kid on the subway tracks. Do that in China. Do that in China. My uncle needs some kidneys right now. I got an uncle who needs kidneys. Do that in China. Please. Do it in China. You get my point. So anyway, uh, let me keep going. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'd say $2,000 a month is more than enough to quote unquote live on if you're in, China, in uh, Philippines or if you're in South Korea, the only thing that you have to worry about is how much is your living going to cost. As long as you're paying like a rent and utilities for about 500 possibly up to about, let's say about 800 maybe even $1,000 a month. The other 1000 will be used for your transportation and your food. Food is cheap in most of those countries. Like, for example, if you go to Thailand, the food is so cheap. 
you can eat a two or three dollar plate and it's like dinner here. It's it's crazy how the good the food is in Thailand. The the street food in Thailand was better than the restaurant food. Like when I was there with my girlfriend, we went to this place. It was a place right next to my hotel. In fact, I put it on video in uh, my video about Thailand. And the thing about it is the food was dirt cheap, but it was good. And even though you're eating like what looks like street food, you look you eating outside. You know, the food was slamming. And when you go to the restaurants in Thailand, yeah, the food was okay, but it was not as good as the street food. And the thing about it is the street food was so much cheaper. And you, if you lived like that, number one, you'd be healthier because in Thailand they have fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, uh, fresh prepped everything. It's none of this shit is fucking reconstituted. None of it's heated. None of, it, none of it's like heated microwave shit. None of that. It's fresh. So you'd be healthier and happier, definitely. Okay, um, is Wi-Fi internet fast and stable in the Philippines? The answer is no. To tell you the truth, that was one of the worst things that I had to deal with in the Philippines. Um, they have cable internet. And as you know, cable internet shares bandwidth. If you're trying to play video games, you could forget it because the streaming is slow and, and low. If you're trying to stream like panels and stuff, video for YouTube, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a serious hard time and you're going to have lag. Um, so no, the internet is not that good. And not to mention, you're like 8,000 miles away and you're and there's no like solid connection. So no, no, the lag is terrible. Okay, you're going to see a lot of eye candy here heading to the college right here. That's your mistake right there. Don't go to the colleges. Don't go to the colleges. If you want, the best you can do is go to the mall. Nice public place. Usually they don't have a problem with photography. If they have a problem with photography, you see a camera on the wall that says no, no cameras here. Uh, he says in the video as he describes the school's exact location and detail. That's another mistake. You never tell people exactly where you are. Didn't one of these rappers just, he was eating waffles or something and his girlfriend texted their location and then somebody showed up to rob him. He got killed. He got shot. It's like, don't tell anybody your location. Please. It, it doesn't matter where you are. Don't tell people exactly where you are because there's always going to be somebody who has a problem with you. It never fails. Okay. Other disturbing and infuriating titles include how to girl proof your room. Avoid getting robbed. Now, Here's the, and then it says how to find a virgin girl in the Philippines, cluing one in on how he views the women in the country he currently calls home. All right. So basically the person who wrote this article is definitely probably a Filipino. It's probably somebody who doesn't like tourism or sex tourism and uh, they have their own agenda. Now, the reality is I have to agree with them. There are certain laws that expats need to know and they need to follow. Says, sex tourist, I'm guessing, dude is nothing but a creep, one proclaimed. As a woman, this is really scary, another one said. Yeah, guys, it's like, y'all need to know the laws, you need to obey the laws. That's the first thing I'm going to say. You need to know the laws, you need to obey the laws. Now, the second part of this story is uh, something I want to mention. But keep in mind, this is a German vlogger, this is a German white male and that has nothing to do with Passport Bros because Passport Bros are black males. So that's the reason why I let off with the first story. Also, going forward, we really need to stop trying to shame men into accepting something that they just don't want. And women have to accept the fact that, hey, we've been taught wrong. We've been sold a certain set of rules and, 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 and a lot of women ran with it. And now it's the very thing that's holding them back from getting or achieving the things that they say they want as it relates to husbands and relationships. It's a really good thing that this was a white German male. Had this been a black male that got arrested for this, these women would be all over TikTok, screaming and yelling. Oh yeah, you see, we told you they nothing but predators, they nothing but trafficking, they trafficking and predators, and they predators and trafficking, and trafficking and trafficking. Thank God this was a white German male. This has nothing to do with passport bros. This is a German, number one, not an American. Number two, it's a white male. Has nothing to do with passport bros. I've gotten the question a couple of times, um, and I think it's from my white viewers, who says, oh, do I get to be a passport bro too, or is it limited to color? Well, unfortunately, especially considering what I'm going to read here, you can travel anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. But here's the problem. 
You can't be a passport bro. And the reason why you can't be a passport bro is because passport bro denotes that you're an African-American male who's going abroad. Passport bro. Now, if you want to be like a passport bruh or you want to be a passport uh, guy or passport Brad or something, yeah, that's cool. But we're the passport bros. And as you can see, it's important for us to protect our good name. We don't want the image of passport bros besmirched. Because if this guy right here claimed that he was a passport bro, that would have been a problem for us because we would have had to denounce him and this, that, and other and move away from him and everything. So anyway, German vlogger picked up woman for views arrested for alleged rape of minor. The German vlogger who earned the ire of social media users and even a city mayor for his content, which depict him picking up women on the street and taking them to motels, has been arrested on rape charges against a minor. Montenlupa City Police apprehended Marcel Messel, known to his viewers as Mr. Poogie, German for handsome German, after one of the women featured in his videos was revealed to be a minor. Reports said the woman, identified as 17-year-old Jing, was reportedly duped into going along with Masal's video script, saying she would be featured in a 24-hour Jawa girlfriend challenge, where the creator would attempt to snag a girlfriend within 24 hours. Yet, the final cut of the video showed Jing being depicted as an 18-year-old single mom and a pickup girl. So she was underage and she was being depicted as being older than she was. The suspect knew the victim was 17 years old, but for the purpose of the content, he informed her to pose as an 18-year-old. When the suspect uploaded their content, she saw that the video was uploaded had been different and the victim was made to look like a pickup girl. Authorities also confirmed that the teen was sexually molested based on accounts and medical findings. Yet, Masal insisted he did not know Jing was underage. I didn't do anything to her. Doing something with the 18-year-old is not bawal prohibited, only if minor Deba right. If I knew that she's a minor, I would never agree, ever agree to her because I'm a mob bait nice guy, Masal said. Masal faces rape charges and violations of the Anti-Photo and Voyeurism Act at the Muntipulupa Police Station. Authorities also found that Masal was overstaying on his visa, which expired in 2019. So this guy was all fucked. He was all fucked up. So first of all, starting from the highest charge, I'll say, was being there illegally. He was there illegally. 2019, his visa expired. Now, you got to understand, visas expiring does not necessarily mean that the uh, immigration is going to immediately come after you. Now, it's more likely something like that happens in America than in the Philippines, because you got to remember the Philippines has a very unsophisticated uh, system for tracking all of these things. I've seen that they're trying to make improvements, they're trying to make it better, and they're trying to add biometrics and everything. The reality is, if your visa expires, if they don't come after you within that first week, chances are they may not come after you at all. They may not even notice. So yeah, that's a problem. You cannot, number one, you cannot be in a country illegally. Totally unlike here in America, where being here illegally is kind of the way to do it. In fact, let me say this. Um, they've been bringing, as you know, you've probably been following the news, they've been bringing illegals here to New York City. Our population is gradually rising. Most of these uh, illegal aliens who are here, as and I did a story about this a while ago, they've been putting these people in vacant motels. They've been renting out rooms. They've been picking up rooms. Like, for example, I think I explained to you one of the ways to make money in real estate here. If you have a place that you can rent out, especially to Airbnb host, you can actually rent your place out to Ukrainian refugees or even Mexican refugees, Venezuelan refugees, whatever it is. And they'll actually pay you above the cost of rent. After all, it's the taxpayer's money. What do they care? They'll just pay it. They don't care. They'll just pay it and then they'll do whatever they're doing in the background. Uh, a lot of these people, they're being forced to eat garbage. And when I say garbage, they're being forced to eat government-sanctioned food. And they're being forced to eat food that they don't want. Like, if you know Hispanic people, Latin American people, these people cook. These people want to eat a very specific cultural diet. They don't want that shit that we're selling to these uh, inner-city youth 
that they're selling. They're selling Hostess and Debbie and chocolate cakes and fucking peanut butter cookies and shit. They don't want to eat that stuff. You know why? That's the reason why their women are like 125 pounds and their men are like 150 pounds. Meanwhile, here in America, our women are like 320, 325 and 345. That's the reason right there. They're not going to school drinking Red Bull in the morning. They're not uh, sending their kids to school with uh, Rice Krispies treats. They're not sending their kids to school with uh, Arizona dollar canned sodas, which just went up to $1.25 because of inflation. They're not sending their kids to school eating bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches every day. That's not how they do it. That's the reason why those people are not obese. Well, that and the fact that they just walked and ran and swam thousands of miles to get here, in addition to the bus trip. Uh, you know, they're dropping them off in front of President, uh, Vice President Kamala's house. So my point being, um, in this country, yeah, getting in here illegally is the thing to do. In these other countries, they don't play that shit at all. They don't play. So that was his first mistake. The second mistake, first of all, if you pick up somebody you know is a minor, you're getting in trouble for it. Please do not do that. Uh, normally, we're not supposed to police you, but I have to say, obey the law. Do not do that stupid shit, especially if you consider yourself a passport, bro. Please don't. Make sure that the person's of legal age. There are easy ways to do that. All you got to do is just say, oh, yeah, let me uh, see some ID. You can just act like a cop. You've heard it told to you many times here in America. Uh, yeah, can I see your uh, license registration? And they'd be like, registration? What the fuck are you talking about? I'd be like, okay, well, let me just see your uh, school ID or your government ID. I do not ever break the law in this manner because I know that even if you made this mistake just once, they're going to bust down your doors and they're coming in. They're coming in like, like SEAL Team 6. I'm not playing that game. So please, guys, please be careful. Don't let this happen to you. But this dude right here, he was wrong on all counts. He was there legally. He, was, he violated their voyeurism act. And he did it with a minor. So yeah, he's going to get exposed. He's going to get expelled probably from the country. I don't know if they'll bother keeping his ass. But also, one other thing I'm going to say, and this will be the last thing I say. You are bound by the laws of your own country. No matter what age a woman is in another country, and no matter what the age of consent is in another country, you're bound by the laws of America. So you know that the federal law of consent is like, 18. Now, there are some states that make it like 16 and stuff. There are a couple of states where it's lower, especially with parental approval. Don't let this be you. Make sure that the person is 18, 19, 20, something higher than 18, just 18 or better. And as long as you do that, you'll never have a problem. You could be just like that guy on 90 Day Fiance. You could be that guy who um, what was his name? I, I never can remember the guy's name. It was either, I think it was Mark or Steve or something. And the chick he was with was Nikki. And this dude was 59 years old. He was married to a foreign woman who was his age. But she left. And she, he, she left him with their daughters. Left him with kids. And he wanted to get a new woman from the same exact country. And he got one. And she was like 19. And the thing about it is by now she's like 25 because this was like three or four years ago. This was before the pandemic. So he was in the clear. He was 59 and she was, he, so that means he's like 65 by now. He was 59, she was 19. Now granted, these strags on the internet, ah, that's disgusting, you're pretty. Listen, let me, let me just say it like this. Nobody gives a shit what they think. Nobody cares. The bottom line is obey the law. As long as you obey the law, in this country and in that country, no problem. They can say whatever they want. They can talk as much as they want. There ain't shit they can do about it. But you got to obey the law. Absolutely, I do. Okay, um, you want to hear it. And I, I should say this, too. I just want to preface this. I'm a world traveler, so I got a real problem with the Passport Brothers. A real problem for TLA to show up. And then they realize when TLA ain't showing up, 
Um, and then they end up with what they call an average guy who in their mind is temporary and they treat him and behave with him as if he's temporary. These women are not incapable of cooking. They're not incapable of doing all the things it would take to keep a TLA. They're not incapable. They refuse. They don't want to because they don't think the man is worthy. That's the truth. Gotcha. But what happens is because they start hearing, and this is the issue, this is how passport bros come in. The issue is when men start singing, they start singing. The singing needs to stop. It really does. Um, because the singing is irritating. And I'm married, but I'm irritated by the singing. Um, and when I say singing, I'm talking about, ooh, ooh, I found paradise. You black women suck. Y'all all suck. A scrub is a guy that thinks he fly, also known as passport brothers, always talk about better deals and how he fly business class. So no, I don't like the passport bros. I don't like those foreign hoes. I have a nose ring in my nose, but I know I'm a diamond. No, I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Saving up money to fly to the opposite side. Tricking in foreign countries. I don't want no scrub. A scrub is a guy that can't get no love from me. Saving up money to fly to the opposite side. Tricking in foreign countries. On my feet, I bought it. The clothes I'm wearing, I bought it. The ride I'm rocking, I bought it. Cause it depend on me. If I wanted the watch you're wearing, I buy it. The house I live in, I bought it. The car I'm driving, I bought it. I depend on me. All the women and the pennies, throw your hands up in the air. All the ladies with Mercedes, throw your hands up in the air. Throw your hands up. All the ladies, throw your hands up in the air. All the ladies with Mercedes, throw your hands up in the air. All mamas, pop the dollar, throw your hands up at me. All the ladies, truly feel me, throw your hands up at me. God, I didn't know you could get down like that. Try how your angels get down like that. God, I didn't know you could get down like that. Try how your angels get down like that. To be continued.